close your eyes. As you watch the breath, think of it going all the way down to the body, all the way down to your feet. Think of it as a whole body process, and you're getting in touch with the whole body. We tend to live in only one part of the body at a time, sometimes in the head, sometimes in other parts. But it tends to be pretty limited. When our awareness is limited, it means that there are a lot of things going on that we don't see. So try to get back in touch fully with the body, all the way down, all the way up. As you settle in like this, it's a lot easier for the mind to step away from its defilements and see them as something you really don't want to get involved in. When you have a sense of well-being just sitting right here, then the taste of the defilements becomes less and less appealing. There's a passage in the canon that says, it's rare to get a human birth, rare to meet with a Buddha, rare to hear his teachings and rare to have the opportunity to practice them. Well, we have all those things, so take advantage of that fact. I was out and about yesterday, and I was noticing how much people are proud of their defilements. Because if you don't have the Dharma, what do you have left? Well, you have your greed, you have your aversion, you have your delusion. And people flaunt them. They flaunt their greed by the way they dress, by the food they eat. Last night I saw someone on the plane he was wearing a hoodie. It says, hate keeps me warm. He had a skull and crossbones on the back. And he was sitting in business class, but still he was harboring his hate and making a big show of it. This is what happens when people don't have any access to the Dharma, or if they do have access but they don't really take it to heart. You become proud of your defilements because there's nothing else you have. But if you practice the Dharma, you have other good qualities in mind, mindfulness, alertness, ardency, concentration, discernment, compassion. If we are in a place that fosters those qualities, that sees them as good, gives you an opportunity to develop them within you. So you have something else to be proud of. This kind of pride, the Buddha said, is, is perfectly fine. Take joy in the fact that you are practicing and seeing your defilements slip away, chip away. And see this as a precious opportunity to practice, to pull yourself out of the voices that are not only outside but also inside, that like your greed, like your aversion, like your delusion. Try to change your attitudes, or at least make the side of the mind that doesn't like these things, make it stronger. So you have qualities like conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment, in charge of the mind. This is what the word indriya means. It's translated as faculty, but basically it means that what's in charge of your mind? It's not only the fact that the defilements are there in the mind, but when you see them as good, that's when they're in charge. When you see the Dharma as good, it gives the Dharma possibility to be in charge. And when the Dharma is in charge, then the possibility for true happiness becomes more and more open, more and more of a reality. And John Mahabhava once said that if people who had attained nirvana could take nirvana and out to show it to other people, nobody else would want anything. All those stores in the airports would have to close down. All the stores in the shopping centers would have to close down because only, only the nirvana store would be open, getting customers. Unfortunately, the enlightened people, awakened people can't show their attainment to us. But it's good that we trust them and they say that it's the best thing there is. So try to keep your values straight. When your values are straight, then it's much more likely that you will walk straight, not be leading to your greed, leading to your aversion. That way the goodness of the mind can stand tall. <laughs>